You cannot apply spiritual things to the flesh. That means applying the things that are of God and try to use our natural thinking and natural perspective and our personal experiences to try to understand the word or to try to apply the word. This can be very complex. There are lots of people who say that they know the Lord. I've been there, done that, where we know the word of God, but we are applying it, the way we're applying it is through the natural lens. And that's not going to work. I'll give you an example. We read about forgiveness, but people have never thought Forgiveness does not necessarily mean I continue in a relationship. Forgiveness does not always mean I stay. Why? While in some cases, it just may mean that. Yes, God wants you to stay. God wants you to continue um, in this friendship or at this particular place, ministry, at this job. But other times, forgiveness is can be granted but it does not mean that you stay or you continue. Reading the Bible about what love means, if you're trying to understand it through your own lens and from a natural sense, you're either going to remain and be around people who are absolutely abusive to you, who will end up destroying you, and the word of God says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, which means this person continues to say things that gives you hope that they'll change, but they don't. And you in turn end up being destroyed because you've become bitter or you become hopeless. Um, or taking the word of God and trying to apply it through your, your natural mind, you can become a person who uses the word of God erroneously and destroy people and use the word of God to justify poor behavior. We've seen it before. So when it talks about the word of God, the word of God is quick and it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and the marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That is Hebrews chapter four and I believe verse 12. So when you're trying to apply the word of God, but you're doing it minus the Holy Spirit, who is the comforter, who is sent to guide us and to lead us into all truth, according to John chapter 16 and John chapter, John chapter, John chapter 16, you are going to mess up. And this is how you end up being taken advantage of, or you can end up taking other people for granted or being hurt. This is how people end up turning their backs on people who have really needed them. And this is how also people have ended up staying longer and being in places where God was trying to pull you out because you take God's word and you look at it and you're understanding it from an earthly level. You're using worldly, earthly wisdom and it's going to either mess you up or you're going to mess up other people. The word of God speaks about a wisdom that is carnal. And that is when people are trying to understand God's words their way. They're taking God's word and they're thinking about, well, what they would do and how would they handle it? And they apply it based on their feelings, based on their comforts or even their discomforts. I am not comfortable to say no. I don't feel comfortable enough to say, to, to draw a line. So... I'm going to fall back on the word and say, well, the word says uh, to turn the other cheek. So I'm just going to let this happen. But no. When we're walking with God, if everybody was just turning the other cheeks, cheek, there would be no David. If everyone was turned the other cheek, Jesus would have never gotten crucified. He would never, he would never been crucified. Forgotten is actually not a word. Um, if everyone's turning the other cheek, there will be no Jehus, there will be no Eli's, there will be no Elijah. 
So there's a boldness that we must have. But then also it's important that when we understand the word of God and, and allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit, then you will not be a modern day Pharisee or scribe that you think you know so much that you begin to destroy other people. I believe it's in Matthew 23 when it talks about how the Pharisees, they are not going to enter into heaven, but they're preventing other people from entering into the kingdom of God. They go and they find proselytes and that means they go to these distant places and they get people who may have been believing one thing and then they convert them. But then what they do, they bring them in and they begin to make them into greater devils in themselves. That's what the word of God says. So there is this balance and this, this, this happens when people know laws and they know the word of God, but they are applying it. They're using carnal understanding, carnal wisdom, natural wisdom. Well, what would I do? This is what I think should happen. And they take the word of God and they mishandle it. Or they take the word of God, they miss, they, they don't apply it correctly because they're not being led by the spirit of God. The spirit of God will lead you and guide you into all truth. The spirit of God will show you what is right before you and you're going to make this and he will instruct you to make decisions that may, may be uncomfortable. Walking in the wisdom of God, may mean apologizing even when you don't feel like you did anything. Why should I apologize? I've done this before. But God knows what he's doing. You need to follow him. Other times, God will say you can accept their apology. But God is saying, pull away from these people. Separate yourself. Close this door. This is the end of this relationship. Don't, don't marry that person. All these things is a part of walking in God's wisdom. But if you don't know, you're either going to be vindictive and use the word of God to justify whatever darkness that's already in you or you will use the word of God and allow yourself to be taken advantage of because you think love and forgiveness and turning the other cheek and being a Christian means I'm a doormat so what do you do in this case the answer is in asking the Lord to help you asking the Lord to teach you how to rightly apply his word Asking the Lord to take from you the things that the learned practices and behaviors that you have placed in yourself, just following religious behaviors throughout your life, whatever you were taught, and ask God to create in you a clean heart. Take away the things that I believe, the things I've thought. Take away my biases and my prejudice if they're there. Take away the, the, the things that I have thought. Take away any pride that I have in me or anything that I'm not even aware of that's in me. And please help me on my walk. Teach me how to rightly divide your word. Teach me how to truly be obedient to you in spirit and in truth. Teach me, teach me, teach me. So when you read the word of God, you will not mishandle it. When you read the word of God, you will not allow it to be where people can use it and make you a human skewer. And you won't find yourself being in places where you cannot grow, relationships where you are being hindered, where you're no longer sure of yourself, in ministries where you're being manipulated, in places where you are not able to do the things that God wants you to do because you're stuck, because you read the Bible, but you did not understand what it was truly saying. You were, you, you read the word of God and you thought, well, this must mean the same for me as it meant for the next person and not realizing that God is going to give you the blueprints for your walk and your path. No one else. They may be able to look at you and see that, hey, I see that God is probably going to use you in this area and that area, but the blueprints and the plans for you, God knows it and he's not going to share it with anyone else but you. The biggest one of the biggest mistakes many believers are making today is taking his word and using carnal wisdom, earthly knowledge, earthly understanding, the one's limited understanding, okay, and 
mishandling and misrepresenting him and not understanding and doing yourself a great injustice and taking away from your peace because you're still in places where you shouldn't be or taking away other people's peace because you've taken God's word and you misrepresented it or taking God's word and put your own spin on it to keep other people in bondage or to hurt others. Ask God for help. That is the safest thing to do. Ask him to help you. And according to the word of God, where Jesus opened up the understanding, he touched his disciples and opened up their understanding so they can comprehend scripture. That should be a prayer. Father, touch my mind, touch my heart, that I will rightly divide your word. I will understand what you're truly saying and that I will not allow myself to muddle what is pure. Okay? God bless.